At the reInvent conference in 2019, they announced a bunch of new features for SageMaker that will be rolling out in 2020. These uh, are not on the current exam, but I would expect them to start to show up pretty soon. So good to know about them. The main thing is that they rolled out something called SageMaker Studio, and they're billing this as a visual IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, for machine learning. So they're really trying to give the developer experience when using SageMaker a facelift and, you know, take it from the current uh, implementation using the AWS console into something that feels more like an actual development environment that you'd be, you know, actually have fun working with. And it integrates a lot of the different features that we're about to cover. Now, today, SageMaker Studio is a separate user interface that you can use for SageMaker in addition to the current one. It's available as a preview right now. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually replaces the existing UI at some point as opposed to just being an alternative. But for now, it exists alongside the existing SageMaker UI that we're, we've been looking at before for notebooks and such. This is what the new notebook interface looks like in SageMaker Studio. And what they're doing is trying to integrate Jupyter Notebooks with SageMaker Studio. And you know, a lot of it's just a look and feel sort of a thing. It just feels more like an IDE, but it's still just a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but it does allow you to share these notebooks, which is kind of a cool thing. So you know, it ha allows you to actually collaborate with other people on your team and share these notebooks with a group of people. It also allows you to switch between hardware configurations because there's no infrastructure for you to manage. So again, you're running this on AWS managed hardware, not on your own hardware. So just a new look and feel for notebooks uh, that allows you to share them with, other, with your colleagues. Another component of SageMaker Studio is SageMaker Experiments. And this is made to just let you organize and capture and compare and search all of your historical ML jobs in one place. So when you're using SageMaker, you tend to accumulate a very long list of notebooks that you've been playing with and jobs that you've been creating. This is just a one-stop place to actually search them and make sense of them and try to figure out which models did the best and actually compare them to each other. So a more useful way of visualizing and uh, interpreting the results from the many different models that you might create using SageMaker. That's SageMaker Experiments. They also rolled out something that I think is uh, maybe the coolest part of all this, SageMaker Debugger. And a big problem in actually developing these, you know, big distributed machine learning models is that they're very hard to debug. You can't just step through them because they're distributed across many machines and they're very complicated in their underlying implementation. So their solution to this with SageMaker Debugger is to just save the internal state of the model at periodic intervals. So as your model is being trained, it's going to take snapshots of all the gradients and tensors over time that you can dig into. And you can sort of visualize what happened during training a little bit more clearly there and get more understanding as to what happened there as you were training your model. You can also define rules for detecting unwanted conditions while the training is happening. So you can say, okay, if this uh, gradient goes greater than this value or this tensor does this weird thing, I want you to actually flag that and fire off an event to tell me about that immediately. So for every rule that you configure, a debug job will be run. And if that rule actually gets found, it will log it and fire a CloudWatch event when that rule is hit that will allow you to do anything that you want to in response to that event. So that's SageMaker Debugger. It's a, a very useful, potentially, uh, debugging tool for figuring out what's happening during the training of your model and digging into problems that might be arising there. So that's, that's a good thing. Another piece of SageMaker Studio, SageMaker Autopilot. And this is basically AutoML in action. So you might have picked up during this course that a lot of machine learning and AI is just trial and error. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a matter of throwing a bunch of spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks in terms of what model performs best for a given problem and what hyperparameters uh, work best for a given model, right? A lot of it's just trial and error experimentation. So SageMaker Autopilot automates that for you. So it will automatically try different algorithms, see which one works the best in your data. It can even automate the data pre-processing step. It can automate the hyperparameter tuning of your model and all the infrastructure that's involved in actually running those jobs as well. So basically, SageMaker Autopilot is going to do all that trial and error for you. You'll say, here's my problem, here's my data, go figure out the best way to uh, build a model around this data and this problem set. That's SageMaker Autopilot. Again, just a, a wrapper around what we call AutoML. Also, we have SageMaker Model Monitor. What this does is give you alerts on quality deviations on your deployed model. So a lot of times you'll tune a model on a historical data set and put it out there, but over time, its performance might actually get worse. And that can be because of something we call data drift. Uh, imagine if you had a loan model and it just started giving people more credit because uh, the data was drifting in values or maybe some input features started becoming missing for some reason. Model Monitor will let you alert on that and actually 
let you know when that's happening. So as the quality of your results are changing over time, you can visualize that. And if you actually do have data drift happening in your input data, Model Monitor can tell you about that proactively. No code is needed for this to work. You just uh, set it up in the SageMaker Studio and it will just work. So how do you put it all together? Uh, there is a big, you know, sort of architectural diagram on the AWS website around this. And this is just a portion of it, actually, about the par parts that we talked about. So SageMaker Studio is sort of this umbrella for this entire new system. And it includes SageMaker Autopilot, which can automate stuff that involves SageMaker Notebooks, and also SageMaker Experiments, SageMaker Debugger, and automatic model tuning. And then on the right there, we have SageMaker Model Monitor, which can sort of monitor the performance of your deployed, you know, train system over time once it's actually been deployed. So that's kind of how it all fits together in AWS's mind. Again, SageMaker Studio is a new thing for 2020, currently in preview. Um, I wouldn't expect it to be on the exam right now, and I'm, I'm recording this in early 2020, but I would expect it to start to creep in on future iterations of the exam. So definitely a good thing to know about, and if you are going to be using SageMaker, it's something you need to know about.